found a lot of, well, one main activity, um, and I have also some videos, but I, I will be super, super short. So this is some, some, some description that is coming from the uh, official uh, uh, EU documents. Uh, and I think that the, the part in yellow explains very well how much what is the um, European Green Deal that is a set uh, of different um, very technical documents. Uh, and so when we talk about European Green Deal, is we are talking about uh, different bits that are here and dark, there and it's more an ideal, but I think that it's expressing very well which are the aims uh, of, this, um, of this series of packages. So thankfully the Europea, European Union is understanding that we have uh, the climate change and environmental degradation, finally, and then we have to deal with this. So they come out uh, with this idea, that is, the European Green Deal will transform the EU into a modern, resource-efficient and competitive economy. Resource-efficient and competitive economy. Ensuring three different things. Uh, no net emissions of greenhouse gases by 2050. The second is economic growth decoupled from resources use. Uh, and no person and no pla 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 place Places. left behind. Wow. Okay? It's the third. <laughs> and not sure why they put it because there is not much about that. But it's fine. At least they put it. No, it's, uh, it's uh, sorry, it's uh, about just transition. It's more regarded uh, to uh, yes. energy issues that the poor countries like in Serbia get out of the coal and, uh, and they give, the uh, give us poor some money so we can build some solar. Uh, power plants yeah, and stuff like that. that. That is the meaning, like justice. Yeah, we are very So, for example, issues. to go in the detail, for example, the transition is about decarbonizer. So, this is also linked to the first uh, topic. Uh, so, they want to ensure that the the, the jobs that are uh, that they, they are in the coal mines and in that sector will be moved uh, in uh, in other sectors so in that in that, in that way in no, no person and no place yes in green economy so there will be no uh, wasteland uh, from a job point of view net uh, emissions doesn't mean like all emissions or something else yeah yes, yes. yes. Oh. 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 and there is also an image next next slide um, no, i thought net emissions means it's equal how much you put out and how much you take. Yeah. So it doesn't mean you yeah. produce zero emissions. It just means that there's a balance between the emissions that you produce and the emissions that you take. And that's why it's problematic. Yeah. Um, the European Union is linked to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so they, through the COVID-19 pandemic, there was a push um, towards the European Green Deal and all the money that is coming uh, um, is somehow streamlined uh, towards uh, the European Green Deal after, or actually we are already still inside, but all the packages to come out from the COVID-19 pandemic, is some, they are somehow inside this framework and uh, they added uh, uh, some funds to the European Green Deal that was signed before the, the pandemic. Um, so let's just read the last, um, the last, uh, the last sentence. Uh, that is a very clear example. The European Commission adopted a set of proposals to make the EU climate and energy transport taxation policies fit for reducing net greenhouse gas emission, but at least 55 percent by 2013, compared to 1990 And uh, we can see here a kind of. Um, Division, can, can you read them? I cannot. Uh, but I can see here. So we have the levels in, in 2000, then 2015, 2030, and 2015. And you can see how coal is dropping and will be eliminated in 2015. And then we, we can see that there is an increase uh, uh, for renewables. Uh, and um, nuclear is a Big uh, question. I will not go into details around that because it's 
a huge topic. Uh, he has a discussion on the taxonomy uh, that is going on this, in this month. The uh, energy as well is, is increasing, that is very controversial. But it gives a bit of the, of the sense. For example, oil that is yellow uh, yeah, is dropping uh, consistently, and also the gray is, that is cold is going towards zero. And uh, as well, natural gas is dropping uh, uh, massively, that is the, the one below the red that is part of it. Um, so this is a video. I didn't do that, uh, but it's coming from the AU, so <laughs> enjoy it, it's only two minutes. <laughs> On the left, uh, we are promoting clean energy, protecting nature from farm to fork, uh, so reducing the, the chain in agriculture. Leading the green, ch uh, green change globally, making homes energy efficient, financing green projects, ensuring a just transition for all, eliminating pollution, striving for greener industry, investing in smarter, more sustainable transport. So these are the, the areas where they want to work on, and. Um, and also the policy and the intervention are all dripping from, 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 from this from this side. So the activity that I was thinking to do and we will not do will not do was to have uh, um, a brainstorm of possible uh, activities that can fit in the Green Deal and then to have a discussion in groups uh, and actually to prepare uh, the project and then to present and then to comment and so on. But that would take one hour or something, 40 minutes as, at least. Uh. So, um, just on the spot, uh, I'm asking you if you can, I will go back to the, to, to the previous slide uh, and I'm asking you if you can mention some projects uh, that you would like to see or you would like to implement uh, inside the green uh, your EU Green Deal. So, and just say to the, to the rest of the group, uh, you just, you can go, you can do a go around uh, and you can say, okay, for example, protecting nature. Uh, what about if we do a increase uh, a park, uh, for example, in my region? Right. And I can ask the youth to add some some funds. Okay. What about um, financing green projects? Uh, I can have in mind some permaculture, or something uh, maybe on a big scale, and I can have some money from there. So what I'm asking you is just to have a couple of minutes to think uh, about projects that that can fit uh, inside this this framework. That, okay, so the, my question was, okay, so everything is fine, the Green Deal is a great solution. Really, really, really? Maybe not. Uh, I found this, uh, this, this article, I think that is really on point, uh, is on open democracy, uh, and is quite short, uh, and is dealing exactly with our topic. So, it offers uh, a, a critique of the European Green Deal based uh, on three different uh, uh, points. So the first uh, is that uh, the European Deal is uh, believing, is based uh, on that it's possible to decoupling the economic growth from environmental impact. So the European Deal, they said, it's possible to have economic growth without environmental impact. And this is one of the bases. Um, actually, there are many researchers, many activists as well, that are saying, look, the problem is the economic growth, because we cannot continue to grow in a finite system with finite uh, resources that are not unlimited. So it's absolutely impossible. But again, this is, a, to, this is showing that um, the 
a Euclid deal is still inside a, a framework that is created by the today economic social system that we have to call with the right name, with the correct name, that is called capitalism. So if we want to challenge uh, uh, the economic growth, the infinite economic growth, and if it's true that it's impossible to recover from environmental impact, then it means that we have to change uh, capitalism. You can do whatever you want, you can destroy, you can peace on it, uh, you can change it, change the name, change the aspects uh, and so on, but it cannot stay like that. So the other criticism is that uh, the European Green Deal is based on the blind faith in technology. So technology will solve everything, from, from energy to transport and so on. And actually, it's based also on technology that are not yet in place. But Carbon sequestering. Yeah, mm -hmm. as well. Or nuclear efficiency, uh, new mode of production of energy. So they are putting in the, in the numbers, uh, in the calculation that I showed you at the beginning, also some kind of technology that still doesn't exist, and maybe we will never see. Okay. Um, and then the final uh, point is that with this European Green Deal, still the public interest uh, is subordinate to the private gain. Again, we are not coming out. For example, Andrei uh, before was mentioning about the, the investment of the private sector, of the bank sector. So the European Green Deal is not just for, for the people, for us, and so on, but again, it's for the private gain. It's not about common, common uh, commonizing the, uh, the economy. So in yellow, there are some, some of the questions that, in my opinion, are important to, to address, uh, also to link uh, to the presentation of Natasha when uh, she was talking about uh, the social aspect, the social sphere. What about social inequalities? What about power, power dynamics? What about people empowerment? So which kind of system we want to have in order to address climate change? Democracy based on what? Uh, consensus? Super majority, majority? Uh, power. Who can take the decision? Us? Corporation? Uh, the municipality or national level? And what about also the impact from a neo-colonial point of view? Uh, so for example, European is based on resources that are coming from the rest of the world. Which are our relations uh, towards this kind of uh, movements of co uh, goods and raw material that we have? Um, again, very often the social sphere is totally neglected. It's just a technological fix uh, uh, for the inside the European uh, Union. Oh, we have a problem, just fix this little bit. The perspective is that it's not just that we have to fix a bit is that it's the game that is broken and we have to change uh, the entire game, just, just one, one part. So, thank you so much. Welcome to Deep Team. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs>